Welcome to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. WNBA star and two-time Olympic gold medalist Brittany Griner was arrested last February when customs agents at a Moscow airport said they found vape cartridges with hashish oil in her luggage. As everyone now knows, Griner was recently found guilty of drug smuggling and sentenced to nine years in a Russian colony. President Joe Biden has stated that Brittany Griner is being wrongfully detained and that his administration would continue to work tirelessly and pursue every possible avenue to bring her home. But is the Biden administration doing enough to make that happen? Well, the business of being black today is Brittany Griner coming home. Please welcome the host and executive producer of Chalk Talk, Kim Davis. Hi, Kim. Hi there. Educator and the KBLA Talk 1580 Chief National Political Analyst, Dr. Nakwata Lai Corte. Hi, Dr. Corte. Hi, Tammy Mack. Political strategist and the executive director of the Texas Democratic Party, Jamar Brown. Hi, Jamar. Hi, Tammy Mack. <laughs> Attorney L. Chris Stewart is not with us today, but we do have the mayor pro tem for City of Missouri City, Texas, Jeffrey L. Boney. Hi, Jeffrey. Hello, how are you, Tammy? I'm doing just fine. Very familiar with Missouri City as I am from Houston, Texas. So all right. That's what's all up. Right. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Uh, the title of the show is called The Business of Being Black. And so we always want to know why it's black people's business at all. So I ask you and we'll kick it off with you, hometown. Uh, why should black people care about Brittany Griner coming home, Jeffrey? Well, I mean, you know, first of all, Brittany Griner is a hometown hero. She's from the Houston area herself. And we just uh, definitely are astounded about the things that are going on with her. But I believe anything that involves African-Americans that I believe are wrongly accused for situations, whether it be here um, domestically or abroad, we should all care about. We should all be engaged. We should all step up to the forefront to do. I believe if Brittany Griner was a white woman, that we would have a lot more attention drawn on this situation, that there would be more advocacy not only from this administration, not only from lawmakers, but also from special interest groups that we normally hear from when white women are accosted or wrongfully uh, handled. Yeah, it reminds me of how we're still seeing movies and documentaries on John Benet Ramsey. Um, Dr. Corte, why should black people care about Brittany Griner coming home? For Black people that are concerned about uh, our safety, especially in places like Russia that are anti-Black, that are anti-LGBTQ, uh, they should be paying attention to this. You know, our sister, uh, Brittany Griner, uh, is uh, not in a safe place right now. Uh, and uh, she's there at no fault of her own. She was uh, there uh, trying to earn some additional dollars, um, uh, earn, earn some additional dollars uh, uh, to supplement her income with the WNBA. And, and because there is a pay disparity issue, uh, she was there doing that and uh, got caught up. And so uh, this is the story of Black folks across this country and around the world. And we need to be attentive. We need to bring her home and we need to do something about the root cause that uh, created this situation in the first place. Kim, I'm a Black woman. Why should I care about Brittany Griner coming home? Yeah, because she's one of us, right? And, and I, I feel like when anything happens to a Black woman, you know, somebody from our community, it's always a reminder that that could be one of us, Tammy, that could be you, that could be me. And we, I hear some people say, well, I would have moved like that. Well, that's not really the point. The point is, once the administration says she's being held wrongfully, we should care. Because if it happens to someone with a name like Brittany Griner, it's a reminder that it can happen to any of us. And we should care about her, not just because she's a great basketball player, but because who she is as a person. And at the end of the day, she is still an American. So we should definitely care. Yes, I don't want to leave that out, that Brittany Griner is an American. Uh, Mr. Brown, get down. Well, I think, absolutely. Well, I think that it's <laughs> fundamentally important for us to make sure that we're paying attention to Brittany Griner and this issue. But this is a humanitarian issue, right? Who we are as people in the world, where we've seen anti-Blackness, where we've seen disparities and injustices, even within the criminal justice system. And we're seeing that and being reinforced in this particular case. And so we should be paying attention because this is over centuries, not only in the United States, but all over the world. And so folks should be really paying attention to this as we need to move forward in our communities. 
So Kim talked about the government, America that is, saying she was wrongfully withheld. So let's get into that. Does Brittany Griner bear some of the responsibility for putting herself in this situation at all? Kim, we'll go back to you on that. You know, that's, that's a tough one. And I understand that she said she made a mistake. I mean, she said, I, I had something because I have this pain. I have a prescription. I didn't mean to bring it. I think um, it's noteworthy to say she, uh, she also pled guilty. She did. She pled guilty. And, I, and, and part of that, too, is so that they could make a plea deal. Like, they can't make a swap deal until there's a guilty plea. But she did say, I did bring this with me. The, the discrepancy is in the amount that they're saying and, and, and really kind of qualifying it as a felony. You know, I wish that she had been able to get out sooner. You know, I don't know. I haven't talked to Brittany. I don't know why when the, the warnings were issued that she didn't get out sooner. I don't know the answer to that. But, but I don't want to say it's her fault that she's there. I want to be clear about that. Okay, Dr. Corte. I think she has already taken responsibility. Uh, and uh, let's be honest, you know, uh, uh, her, uh, the, 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 the amount of drugs that they found um, should not have warranted almost a decade in prison. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we need to be mindful of this as we travel to different parts of the world that, you know, whether you have a medical uh, prescription or not, there are certain hot spots in the world that don't honor that, right? And and so if, if she's guilty of anything, you know, she's she's guilty of, uh, of, of, of taking her prescription uh, to a place that was a hot spot, um, but she is not guilty of being used as a political pawn. And that is exactly what is happening. Uh, that is why the White House has, has declared uh, her wrongfully detained. And it's also why the Secretary of State uh, and others are working around the clock now, uh, thanks to the advocacy and activism of so many folks on the outside putting pressure on the administration. This is why they're working so hard uh, to bring her and Paul Whelan home safe and sound. Uh, Jeffrey, does she bear any responsibility for this? Well, as was stated, you know, she accepted responsibility, pled guilty uh, for what was found in her uh, her suitcase or luggage. Uh, so, I mean, I guess you have to uh, go with what the individual who was accused uh, is stating that uh, they pled guilty. But I will say this, you know, there was a gentleman here recently uh, Trevor Reed, he was a Marine who was actually in, in Russian jail for about two years. Uh, and he was held on some what they believe to be bogus assault charges. And he was recently released in a swap uh, with Russia uh, in exchange for a pilot, a Russian pilot, who was actually convicted for cocaine charges by the United States. And the United States stepped up to the plate to make the exchange, make the swap for uh, Trevor Reed, this ailing U.S. Marine, uh, in exchange for this convicted Russian pilot. So I guess what I'm saying is that although she may have accepted responsibility, and I question that as well. I mean, I don't know if she did it under duress or whatever, but I have some doubts. Uh, I, I think that, you know, when you talk about Russia, you talk about some other things, you know, sometimes things get planted. I don't know if she was, you know, forced to do that confession. I don't know. I mean, I just know we're talking about Russia and Vladimir Putin here. So, you know, I, I really question a lot of this. Uh, but I do believe that she accepted responsibility. Jamar, she's familiar with Russia. She's no stranger to Russia. Does she hold any accountability here? Well, like uh, my fellow panelists said, I think she's accepted her own personal responsibility. But I think above all, the question that we're answering here is also talking about the terrain in which she's on, where she has to accept responsibility. We already have significant challenges in the criminal justice system in America. Imagine in a war country like Russia, where we do not have the best diplomatic relationships to be able to support her in the way that we really could, and also at the rate that we need to support her in the way that we could, you know, also as well. And so you're going into another country where we have diplomatic strains with um, and then this issue particularly happens. And so I'm grateful that the Biden administration came out forcefully and said that she's wrongfully detained, but also acknowledge that as the Secretary of State and as other diplomats are working around the clock to move this forward, that's the situation that we're in. But she was also in Russia because she needed to make more money. And we can get into the inequities of pay and uh, within the sports arena. And so that's probably a whole another conversation of even why she was there 
to even put get herself in the situation that she's in now. And so I think that's what we've got to start looking at is where you are, how you accept responsibility, but then what are the other dynamics that are moving around you and how fast can they move? And we do need it to move faster. So did Russia mistreat her? Did they give her a harsher sentence than uh, because she's American, because she's black? Anyone can take that question. Absolutely. You know, I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm everybody gonna say, is in agreement. Yeah, so yeah they do yes, it in America, so I would imagine <laughs> they did it. You know, I, I had a chance to host um, a rally that, that the Congresswoman did here, a Free Britney Griner rally a, a few months ago, and Trevor Reed was there, and he spoke. He wanted to be there to support Britney. He wanted to kind of tell his story just a little bit, but his point was this: it was hard for me, and he talked about what he endured. He said, "But it's going to be more difficult for her because she's a woman, she's black, and she's lesbian." And none of those things jive in Russia. So he said it. He said, you've got to bring her home. And, you know, they've been working to do that in Paul Whelan. But un undoubtedly, it's different for her because she's Black mm -hmm. and a woman. And the, and the thing, if I can jump in, the point yeah. to realize is anti-Blackness exists all over the world. We talk about it in America, but it's even in other cultures and other countries, other communities. And I think we're seeing some of that at play here in terms of the level of sentence compared to the amount that is in dispute um, that she had um, in her possession. And so I think we're still seeing some of that uh, at play here. Absolutely. I uh, want to continue the discussion, but we've got to take a quick break and we'll be right back on the business of being black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. Welcome back to the business of being black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. Hi, everyone. The business of being black today is Brittany Griner coming home. Should she be home? I think all of my panelists agree that she should be home. Am I correct in saying that? Absolutely. Um, I'm Absolutely. not exactly sure where the disagreement could lie in today's show <laughs> because uh, every American should want her home. But there are some Americans that are saying, hey, listen, she she knew what she was doing. She knew, you know, that this was possible. She shouldn't have done what she did. Are people who say that, are they wrong for saying that, Jeffrey? Well, you know, I mean, you know, it's hard for me to really look at that. Uh, you know, especially when we're talking about something overseas in Russia, when we have archaic, draconian and really uh, over the top uh, laws in place here. I think about Plastico Burris when he was in New York and went to the club and shot himself. Right. You know, and he ended up going to jail for something that he did not you know, try to do. But he was in a state whereby he um, he ended up carrying a weapon and he wasn't supposed to uh, in that particular way. Uh, and so he ended up getting convicted according to those laws. And so I, I, I really try to not go in the direction of what people try to say is she should have known. Maybe she didn't know. I know, Tammy, you said earlier that she's been playing over in Russia, has been over in Russia. She should have already known. But maybe she didn't. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm call me a conspiracy theorist. But, you know, I don't I don't uh, think that she may not have had it planted on her and forced to make that confession. I know that that's been done before. There were four. Uh, you know, agents that were forced to sign, you know, confessions of espionage years ago, and they were convicted and held in Russia. And there was a Russian swap uh, with the United States uh, for 10 Russians, you know, in exchange for those individuals that they gave forced confessions. So I really don't believe that Russia is innocent here by any stretch of the imagination. And although, again, she accepted responsibility publicly, I really do believe that there may have been some coercion involved. I mean, how well, often... Oh, go, oh, ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Forte. How often have we seen folks, uh, black folks, at the wrong place at the wrong time? Uh, and and I think that's what happened to Brittany. Uh, you know, Brittany's an NBA player. You know, she's not a, a diplomat. Uh, she's not a politician. You know, uh, I don't think she had any idea that uh, you know her being there. You know, uh, and you know having these drugs. Um, you know, on her. Uh, with her medical prescription, that it was going to lead to all this. You know, the fact that that you know we got into this this conflict with between Ukraine and Russia so quickly. I mean, there's so much in the sauce here. You know, there are so many other variables that are a part of this equation. And so, you know, yes, was Brittany in the wrong place at the wrong time? Should she have had it on her? You know, um, clearly not in Russia, not allowed. You know, but let's not lose fact of lose track of the fact that too often. You know, there are folks that like to criminalize, you know, uh, uh, you know, everything that black folks do. Uh, they want to criminalize, you know, uh, uh, you know, places that we are and items that we carry. And that's no different uh, in Russia today. And so I think it's important to shine a light on that. 
So let's get down to the bare bones of it. I've been talking about Brittany Griner probably uh, since shortly after February. And I mean, you know, probably right at uh, the March uh, moment when we discovered that she was being held in Russia. However, there was no other media coverage on Brittany Griner for quite some time. And America, the government, our government said absolutely nothing until most recently. And so the question becomes, has America done enough? Have they done enough or have they mishandled this, Jamar? Well, I think that there's a couple pieces to that question, right? When we talk about has America done enough, I think every case is particularly different. But what we've seen particularly from the Biden administration is a forceful uh, call saying that she's unlawfully detained. A lot of that did come you know, from a particular time frame of when the sentence was handed. They've also been working around the clock to do diplomatic relations. We have some strained relationships as it relates to like right now our situation with Ukraine and some of that is at play, unfortunately. And that impacts bringing Brittany home, I think as well. Uh, but the other piece too is making sure that in terms of the systems and how we navigate the systems, how we advocate for the systems, how are we advocating in media to bring light to these particular issues and bring light on a consistent manner and earlier in the process. But then also for folks like us in the political space, how are we navigating our members of Congress, our US senators to put pressure on the Biden administration and other departments to ensure that we're able to move forward in this in a meaningful way. And so uh, we won't say that we've done enough until she's home, but the uh, Biden White House is putting pressure here and we hope to get her home soon. You talk about earlier in the process. So, Kim, I want to go into earlier in the process. Is there something the Biden administration could have done differently earlier in the process? So here's the thing. I don't I don't I don't I don't personally find a need for the Biden administration to tell the world what they're doing if it helps them negotiate. But what they could have done earlier in the process to answer your question is make sure they communicated with her family and her wife. I think that was the thing that got people really upset because the wife had not heard from somebody in the administration high enough. She had heard from the administration, but from either the president or the vice president and, and also like Tony Blinken. So that negotiating, so they're telling us everything that they're doing. I don't want the Biden administration to do anything that can hamper or hinder their ability to negotiate with her. They already don't have a lot of leverage because of what's happening with Ukraine. They are working on a, on a prisoner swap, but the more they talk about publicly, the more they show their hand. So. That's my that's how I would answer that question. They could have communicated with her family sooner. I think that would have given them some comfort in knowing what was happening. And that's my that's that's my take. Dr. Corte, I see you wanting to jump in. Go for it. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I think the Biden administration, quite frankly, will slow out the gates on this. Um, and, and we have to give a hat tip to the press, particularly the black press. Uh, for bringing this up during uh, White House press briefings. Big shout out to April Ryan at the GRIO and Jaron Gaynor over at the GRIO for uh, keeping this issue front and center. Also, we have to give a shout out to the activists and advocates. Right now, as we sit here today, there are almost 400,000 signatures to the change.org petition uh, urging uh, the administration to do everything they can to bring Brittany Griner home. Those are serious numbers. Uh, and so, this was an administration that was slow out the gates, uh, and it took them a while, it seemed like, to get organized. The fact that Brittany Griner has, had called the U.S. State Department over a dozen times, and the person who's supposed to be manning the desk, you know, wasn't manning the desk and those calls didn't get through. Guess what? That didn't inspire very much confidence uh, among people that are a part of the base uh, that helped to send Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the White House. And so I think they read those tea leaves and they recognized that they needed to get organized and they needed to do even more. Uh, and, and that's brought us to where we're at, where uh, there is a serious offer on the table. A prisoner swap doesn't come easy to the, the Department of Justice does not like to do prisoner swaps. And the fact that that is on the table signals that this administration got their act together and they're doing everything they can to bring her home. Jeffrey? Yeah, I, I, listen, I, let's be real. You know, America, this is not mutually exclusive to the Biden-Harris administration. This is about America. America has a history of prison swaps for people they actually care about, that they clearly want to do an exchange for. And they've traditionally been for captured soldiers or people in the military. Let's, let's think about it for a second. Brittany Griner is a, a black woman over in Russia that was detained, many believe to be wrongfully. And 
they can't even focus on bringing her home solely. They have to include a white man in the exchange conversation. And so let's 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 be real and understand that Brittany Griner uh, has not been a focal point of this administration or for America as a whole. I mean, when have black people actually gotten their uh, their voices heard or gotten advocacy without protest, without the signatures that were just aforementioned, the 400,000 signatures, without the black press being involved? It's really, really dis, you know, disingenuous for us to act like the Biden administration, the Biden-Harris administration is just so concerned about Brittany Griner that they want to bring her home. They didn't bring it up uh, or care enough about it at first. They knew she was over there because they know everything. They know when Pookie is in the uh, dope house selling dope and they can do a, a drive-by on them and do a jump out on them, but they don't know about Brittany Br Griner being held captive over in Russia. I don't believe that they've done enough at all. And I think that they need to do more and do more quickly. Let me say this. I know I do know that the WNBA did not want there to be a lot of conversation when they first found out that Brittany was held because they thought it would hamper the chances to get her home. So I am not at all carrying the water for the Biden-Harris administration. But I do think that there is a process. And sometimes when you negotiate in public, I don't care who you are, I think it lessens your, your, the strength from when you're negotiating from, especially considering, as we all said, we don't have great diplomatic relationships there. Then there's the Ukraine issue. And I'm also not bothered that they are still trying to get Paul Whalen home because they've been talking about that even before Britney. But I do think that Britney should be a focus. And my hope is that now that she is, it'll happen more quickly and that they can get the prisoner swap done in a timely manner. I have it on good authority that that's, that's, there's some things happening. We may hear something really soon about it. Okay, I'm glad you didn't tell us because um, somebody's calling somebody and they mad y'all talking about something here. <laughs> They're watching going, hold on, let's make sure Kim don't tell who she got it on good authority from here. Um, but I do want to ask the question, you bring up a very valid point. Does the attention that America gives Brittany Griner, does it give Russia more leverage in any type of negotiating tactics here? I think it does because it's like, oh, she matters that much more, you know, because which is it? They held her because she's black or they held her because she could be a pawn. It's probably a combination. Right. But when Russia is really all about Russia, that's their bigger thing. They want something that the U.S. has. They're not happy with the U United States support of the Ukraine war invasion, any of that stuff. And so there's a lot to unpack. But yeah. if it means we have to know less so that Brittany could have a better shot at getting home, tell me less. Mm, mm, say yeah. less. Huh? Huh? Say less. Jamar, I know you want to get in here. <laughs> so we're going to fall back on that question when we return to the business of being black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. I do want to talk about uh, Brittany Griner's attention she gets and how that affects these negotiations. So we'll be back and let the other panelists weigh in on that, on the business of being black with Tammy Mack on Fox. So welcome back to business of being black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. And the business of being black is what are we going to eat? Yes. That is always my husband's question. Like, what are we eating today? What are we eating today? Ha ha. Well, guess what I found? America's number one meal kit. Hello Fresh is here to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. And look, there's something for everyone, I promise you that, ranging from family friendly to fit and wholesome and even veggie. Hello Fresh has tasty and nutritious meals that are sure to please everyone, okay? HelloFresh offers these step-by-step -step recipes that feature a range of delicious flavors, cuisines, and ingredients. So you will never get bored. I'm a cook. I can attest to that. You can try something new every week. The recipes are easy to follow and mm, so quick to make. So you can skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the last few weeks under the sun. I love HelloFresh. It takes the guesswork out of what are we eating today for me. And the meals are so good. I ate the sheet 
pan Monterey Jack unfried chicken. Yes, yesterday, just yesterday, unfried chicken. Tastes like fried chicken. It was so good, y'all. My goodness. The meals are low in calories and they are tasty. HelloFresh is the best thing for my family. Nobody, and I mean nobody in the family says, let's go to the fast food restaurant. No, 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 no. They say, ma, you cooking those HelloFresh today? So go to HelloFresh.com slash TammyMac16 and use code TammyMac16 for 16 free meals. Yeah. Across seven boxes and three free gifts. You got it. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash TammyMac16. And don't forget to use the code TammyMac16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Delicious, healthy, portioned meals has been my business. Make it yours too. We'll be back to the business of being Black with Tammy Mac on Fox Soul. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I am Tammy Mack. Hi there. The Business of Being Black today is Brittany Griner coming home. Please welcome the host and executive producer of Chalk Talk, Kim Davis. That's a tongue hey twister, there. Kim. That's I know a it is. Twister, Kim. Talk, talk. <laughs> but you did good. Thank you. <laughs> Educator and the KVLA Talk 1580 Chief National Political Analyst, Dr. Nicorda Lai Corte. Hi, Dr. Corte. Hi, Tammy Mack. Political strategist and the executive director of the Texas Democratic Party, Jamar Brown, is with us. And the mayor pro tem for City of Missouri City, Texas, Jeffrey L. Boney. Hi, Jeffrey. Hey, Tammy Mack. Jamar, let's get to you. Does the attention that America uh, gives Brittany Griner, and by the attention, I mean, I'm talking uh, the intention uh, the attention with good intention, the rallies, the cries, the media, the attention that we are now giving her, will it, it, it will it give Russia more leverage? Well, I think that one of the pieces because of our diplomatic situation with Russia, that they will use anything um, in this particular case to try to wield power as they're trying to be a superpower in the world. But the second piece, I think that's important around the attention and the rallies. It's important to recognize that we're standing for our own sister and standing for our own community. But the other part, too, is also as we're doing these diplomatic negotiations and swaps is also making sure that she's safe even while she's detained right now. And so navigating what the Biden administration is sharing with the public, even with her family, but also while they're doing the work to make sure that we they bring her home, we need her to be safe while she's there right now, too. So it's a safe the issue on both ends. And I think that's important to recognize. Great point. On November 7th in 2017, three men's basketball players from UCLA were detained in China for shoplifting. Uh, Cody Riley, Leangelo Ball, and Jalen Hill were released exactly one week later on November 14th, 2017. They thanked Donald Trump, former president, for helping them with their release. Uh, as we continue to talk about how if Brittany Griner were white, if Brittany Griner were a, a woman, a, a white woman, if Brittany Griner were straight, if Brittany Griner were LeBron James, we, we're talking about three um, uh, 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 black men who were released within a week by uh, with the help of President Donald Trump. So where do we stand here? How does this situation differ from what we're dealing with now, uh, Dr. Corte? Well, our diplomatic relationship with Russia is very different from our diplomatic relationship with China. Uh, this is a different president. Uh, uh, Russia is engaged in a military conflict with uh, an ally of ours, Ukraine. And so geopolitically, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, more of apples and oranges here. Uh, but it's important to point out that the contrast, though, uh, is such where, you know, you see the difference between how autocracies uh, operate and how democracies operate. And the fact that we are able to exercise our voices, to lift our voices and to say, you know, bring our sister home. Um, and we don't have to, to fear, you know, any, you know, law enforcement knocking on our doors. Uh, uh, that is uh, a testament uh, to a democracy that is worth protecting. And so, you know, uh, whether we're talking about a, a Republican president or a Democratic president, uh, democracy worked. Uh, here and and hopefully it will work again in bringing Brittany Griner home because the public sentiment will allow nothing less. Excellent, Jamar. 
Well, I agree with all those points. I think that we're just in a different situation uh, in terms of how we navigate relationships with that particular country, um, uh, how different administrations function and operate um, in terms of the diplomatic negotiations. And so I think that's a little bit of the difference in, you know, what you saw there. Right, right. Uh, so, Kim, what's your thought on that? I, I agree with everything that um, that's been said. I mean, it, the countries are very different. I mean, do I think that men get are more protected? Yeah, absolutely, I do. But I also think that Russia and China, in terms of our relationships, are very, very different. You know, they were detained for shoplifting, but they didn't go to trial. I mean, it, it, it just was a a very different set of circumstances. And I, I think we have to, it's fair to think about that. It didn't get to the point of being thrown into a prison and a court date set months and months later, they, they were able to get something resolved pretty quickly. And I don't know what happened in those first days of her being there in terms of conversations with the US. I mean, I know that, you know, it talks about there was a phone call made, it wasn't received. You know, I don't know what was happening behind the scenes, but I, I think it is apples and oranges when you look at what happened with the three young men from UCLA and Brittany. And unfortunately, this, this being played out on a very public world stage, Brittany has been held for far too long. Right. Far too long. Dr. Corte, you agree with that? Absolutely. I agree with that. And, and I think that uh, we cannot let up on this. Uh, part of the reason why the administration has responded a bit more aggressively is because of the public sentiment, you know, because we've seen, you know, the black press and we've seen activists and advocates out front. Um, you know, saying bring her home. I mean, when's the last time we saw al almost 400,000 uh, change.org signatures to bring, you know, a black queer woman back home to the United States, our fellow American, right? And so this is also a demonstration of progress uh, in terms of, you know, our community, which sometimes, you know, sort of, you know, gets a bad rap for being homophobic. Uh, you know, I've seen plenty of Black LGBTQ people and allies sort of step out and lift their voice and say, that is our sister. And that is a, a, a big deal. And I think it's going to make a, all the difference in terms of bringing her home safe and sound. Now, Trump I, has... I, I go, wanted, go ahead, I Jeffrey. To chime in and just say, you know, I, while I agree that, that both Russia and China are separate countries, we've had strained relationships with China as well. And it's telling that Donald Trump, former President Trump, and I even hate to even admit this, seemingly did something more than the current president as it relates to hostage or uh, uh, not hostage negotiations, but situations where he got engaged and involved on a criminal act that was uh, done on a foreign country. And he was able to, uh, according to their own admission, influence the situation and help not only the charges get dropped, but them to come home. Uh, I don't know what happened behind the scenes as it relates to Brittany Griner. I've heard a lot of different reports uh, about uh, the slow, slowness of response, but I think that this particular administration could have done a whole lot more in the early stages to try to get more engaged and involved and to see if they could do something in advance. You know, I do understand that the, the Ukraine uh, strained relationships and the war that's going on right now between uh, Russia and Ukraine has played a factor in this, but I don't know that she's being used as a pawn as much as we not using the same type of advocacy that we've used in many other instances to try to assist to bring other people home or to address situations. He may have cut a deal with China, to try to get some uh, business deals done or some other things, but I think it's important to note that he was able to get that situation resolved within a week. And now this young lady has been not only gone to trial, she's been sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison. Donald Trump did say she shouldn't have done what she did. She deserves to be there. Uh, Dr. Corte, do you think if Donald Trump were president, she'd be free by now, though? I think if Donald Trump was president, <clears throat> he would have completely forgotten about Brittany Griner. Uh, I, I don't think we would have seen nearly the kind of uh, aggressive posture that this administration has taken. Listen, I will concede that this administration was slow to move on this, at least publicly. It was disappointing to hear that behind the scenes that uh, the wife of Brittany Griner didn't seem to have sufficient outreach and that the State Department, you know, seemed to be asleep at the switch in terms of receiving those phone calls. But this administration- But Donald Trump got three black men out. 
Two, two different geopolitical situations, the situation in China versus our diplomatic relationship and lack thereof in Russia. Jeffrey it brings up a good point, though, when he says we have we we definitely have some some issues with China as well. Not an apples to apples comparison. Yeah. You know, our you know, we, we do so much business with China. Americans are one of the largest consumers of Chinese goods. You know, it is an, it is not an apples to apples comparison in terms of our relationship with China versus Russia. You know, and you add to this the, the conflict in Ukraine and the role that the Biden administration has played and is playing in supporting that ally and inviting them to, to be a part of NATO. There is so much more in the sauce geopolitically uh, with with regard to Russia than China. And so it's not a fair comparison. Jamar, uh, with, can, with, with, China, go no, ahead, I Jeffrey. Say, in follow up, you know, I know it's very difficult for any of us, including myself, to give credit to Donald J. Trump for anything that he did, particularly in a positive sense. But let's just be honest. He did something that this current president did not do or could not do in this yeah. particular could not disagree with you more. I disagree. Could not disagree with you more. Think about the relationship. I didn't interrupt anybody else. I'm, I'm sorry. just trying to I'm get sorry. my point out to say Go that ahead, Jeffrey. all I'm saying to you is that although there are two different countries and there are two different situations, we have to look at what was accomplished, what was done, what was handled. These three young men were uh, you know, charged with shoplifting over in a foreign country, China, uh, regardless of our relationship with them, that was a crime that they were alleged to have committed. They reached and, I have to, to, and I have to admit, they were black men. That right, means but, something in the context of what we're talking about now, Kim. It does mean something. And let's go back to, if we, so we're going to talk about Donald Trump, his relationship with the president of China is very different, you know, in terms of how he has you know, dealt with him. His relationship you, with the president of Russia is very different also. It is very different also, but I don't think he would have done anything for Brittany Griner. You heard him. He said she should she she was wrong. I don't think he would have stood up for her. And so I, I think we start kind of it's tough to conflate all of those things into one thing, into one box. Right. Is the drug charge more mean more in Russia than shoplifting in China? I don't know enough about the laws overseas to answer that question, but I do think the relationships, they're not just different countries. The relationships are different. Mm -hmm. Strained, concerned, absolutely, but definitely different. So are we going to say, are we going to say then that uh, Joe Biden doesn't have a good relationship with any of the foreign leaders overseas, that he's unable to do things yeah. like former president was able to do because of no, his relationship? And his no, no. all I'm simply no. saying, though, all I'm simply saying, everyone, is that we have to to to, to acknowledge what was done. These three African American men, and I, I I keep hearing everybody say it, if he was president, he would not give a damn about Brittany Griner in the same way he cared about these three young black boys. What made these three African American young boys different than Brittany Griner? Why doesn't he care, or why wouldn't he care about her as much as he cared about those three young black boys? And, and, and really in the context of, of what black people, most black people think about Donald Trump, you, we wouldn't have expected him to get the three black boys out of China. Absolutely. But the thing that I'll add here and that quickly is, you know, Hold I that think thought, Jamar. I know. Hold it. Write it down. <laughs> we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I am Tammy Mack and we are talking about Brittany Griner coming home. That is the business of being black today. Jamar, uh, as we left before we left for break, I come back to remind people what we were talking about. And that was former President Trump releasing three UCLA or getting released three C UCLA. UCLA ball players from China. And the question on deck is would, if he were president, would he have gotten Brittany Griner out within a week? And the thought process behind that is you, you got to kind of think about it. Trump plays his opponent and he loves to play his opponent. So perhaps the reason why he's saying Brittany should stay there is because he knows Joe Biden is trying to get her out. Were he president, perhaps his powerful move would be to say, I got Brittany Griner, the black lesbian woman out and so now you black and lesbians have to vote for me well mm. let's break this well, let's break this down in a couple ways uh, going back to the relationships conversation it, it matters when you're catering to a particular president and trying to navigate your political power that may or may not work 
in a particular case. And so I think that's one part of it. I think the second part of it is we've seen that in some terms of Trump's relationships, how he has navigated Black men and how he has navigated Black women, especially uh, we can name some of the cases even here in America. So I think that that's a huge piece and a huge component also to it, uh, especially to a constituency that doesn't have a high uh, voting number for him uh, in, in two elections that he ran in. And so I think that those are some of the dynamics that we have to start looking at is what is Trump's relationship to those particular individuals? And then the third thing that I think we should be looking at is we're talking about detainment and then a detainment and a conviction. And those are two different steps in the process where if someone injected themselves, there could be a different result based on. Ah, but if Trump would have got her out in a week, are. we wouldn't have even it seen. It wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Kim? It yeah, I agree. It wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. I don't think it would have happened. I, I, can't, I, don't. I, I don't think we can say that because, I mean, you know, hindsight 2020, I mean, if he was able to do it for the three young African-Americans, who's to say that if but, he was in the office that he wouldn't have been able to do it for Brittany? Well, what Pratt? they're I, saying, I, though, I, Jeffrey, is that the circumstances are significantly different. We're in the middle of a war with Ukraine or we've we've got our nose in the business of the war with Ukraine and Russia. And uh, and and they're just different circumstances here. It's and, a false and comparison. Thing, and also it's a, it's the thing a false to add, comparison. Also, the thing to add when you talk about the relationship, we know that Donald Trump, through his campaign, through his presidency, was spending time sucking up to President Putin during that time. And so, so then perhaps Brittany piece. Griner, since we're on this if thing, perhaps right. Brittany Griner never would have been detained if Trump were president. I, I no, mean, I, I don't think that. I don't, I don't see what happens. evidence there would be <laughs> there would be to suggest that. You know, I I, I think. You well, know, Jamar if, just if, said the relationship. So the relationship is the evidence. If but Trump, that, but the Trump, relationship would... Go ahead. Go, go ahead, okay. Jamar. The relationship I'm talking about, and the question you asked earlier was Russia using things as leverage. Using Trump and as a control and as leverage doesn't mean that it would move faster. It means more leverage over Trump, which he wanted to give Russia leverage because he wanted to maintain a relationship with Russia and that president. So that doesn't mean that he... She wouldn't have been detained. That doesn't mean she wouldn't have been out in a week in particular cases, because some of that leverage from Vladimir Putin's perspective could have been controlled where that would be leverage for Trump to give something that which, which could be is, dangerous to the why, country. I, I, which is I, will, why I, I say, which is why I say that assuming that he was in office, that there's no way that you could say that he wouldn't have been able to use his influence, regardless of what he gave up, regardless of the influence that would have been uh, you know, given uh, over him because of this decision, that there's a strong possibility because of his relationship with Vladimir Putin that she, he could have actually made this happen and would have been a big feather in his cap amongst African Americans, but amongst the LGBT community. I will. So I, will I, think concede, I, I will concede that if Trump were president, would Brittany Griner be used as a political pawn? Absolutely, by the Russians, but also by uh, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, and, you know, uh, you know, whether or not he would be able to to get her out or not, I, I think it's highly unlikely. I don't think there's any evidence to suggest that he would see an upside politically uh, in terms of rescuing a black queer woman from Russia. Uh, uh, but it's important to note that if Donald Trump was president right now, he'd uh, have he'd be he'd be so occupied uh, you know, trying to uh, to keep from uh, uh, being uh, convicted of something that I'm not sure if he would have the time uh, to be able to focus on this at all. <laughs> oh, so okay, I see. Thing. Okay, you you throwing shots there, Mr. Forte. I got you. Okay, so Call let's have. I, I want to do a quick uh, lightning oh, round yeah. here. I'm going to do a lightning round. Can we get one? <laughs> I would love to have a lightning round with you people. So let's 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 do a quick lightning round. Here we go. So uh, has this administration done enough to bring Brittany Griner home from beginning to end to right now? Has this administration done enough? Yes or no? And why? Give me 35 good seconds. Uh, Jamar. Well, I think we've mentioned uh, throughout the segment around uh, the president and the administration being involved much earlier in the process and intervening much earlier in the process. But where we are right now is we've done a lot around the dip diplomatic negotiations, offering the swap, which is hard to get through the Justice Department um, as well. And so 
the ultimate answer to the question is you've done enough once she's gotten home, but the Biden administration is working around the clock to get her home. And that's our hope here. Kim. So the answer is no, because she's not home yet. And I think that's what it all boils down to. Are they doing more? Are they moving a little more expediently? It looks like it. And but they could have gotten in the game earlier and definitely could have communicated with her family earlier. So those are the things I would have liked to have seen happen differently that I needed that we could have known about. And hopefully that would have also meant that they were negotiating behind the scenes. So no, they haven't. And that's why. Mm, Jeffrey, what you say? I, I say absolutely not. Uh, when you think about what's been put on the table as to what Russia states or le- allegedly Russia states they want or who they want to be released and what America is saying that, uh, you know, they want in exchange uh, as far as prison swaps is concerned, uh, that hadn't happened yet. So clearly, once again, uh, some negotiation skills are not at play. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. All I know is what I see with my uh, not lying eyes. So America has a history of prison swaps for people they care about. Uh, she's not a, a soldier. She's not a Marine. She's not a, a military captive. Uh, and to me, she's not uh, deemed valuable to America's best interest at this time. So I believe the administration, the lawmakers, other special interest groups would be adamant about this uh, situation if it was a white woman. Mm. Dr. Corte. Thanks to the black press, thanks to the LGBTQ press, the administration has done more. Uh, it will not be enough until she is home safe and sound. Uh, but you know, the fact that this administration uh, has been able to uh, hear the public sentiment and to uh, be willing to do more uh, we're talking about a prisoner swap of some some pretty serious bad guys. Um, uh, it 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 uh, it gives me confidence uh, that we're moving in the right direction, and, and I am so hopeful that we bring Brittany Griner home. All right. So I want to know uh, real quick here. Um, I'll save this, uh, Dr. Corte. Let's let's stick with you here. Um, what can you tell us about a more perfect union? Well, I can say that every single one of us on this panel are doing our part to build a more perfect union. Uh, That is uh, the program that I moderate uh, on KBLA Talk 1580 every single Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Pacific. We talk with change makers and lawmakers and newsmakers, uh, the folks that are in the arena doing the heavy lifting uh, to build a more perfect union. We like to center a Black perspective uh, in this work. And I encourage you all to tune in every Sunday, 10 to 12 Pacific. Jamar, please tell us about the Texas Democratic Party. And uh, do you have plans on turning that state blue? <laughs> well, we have plans on turning the state blue. Good luck but with the, that. But the, Boy, but the I'll other, tell but you, the, between but, Texas but, and Florida, we would just like <laughs> to separate from the United States with those two states. Oh, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? but, but uh, you know, it's important, right? Because this isn't just about electing people. This is about governing power. We've seen what has happened in Texas around voter suppression. We've seen a lack of access to health care, um, the uh, increasing our public education in Texas. And so that's what's on the ballot this year. Uh, And so we are working in all 254 counties. Our statewide candidates have been all over the state and turning out crowds. Beto O'Rourke is turning out crowds. We are closing the polls, not only in the governor's race, but also the lieutenant governor's race, the attorney general's race, where we have an indicted attorney general. Imagine (laughs) an indicted person prosecuting other people. And so, <laughs> and, so, and so that is, you well, know, what President we're doing, Trump is running again. The former President Trump is running in 2024. I'd imagine he'd be indicted by then, too. <laughs> well, 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 we'll see. The FBI has been making some moves, so we'll see what happens. OK, OK. So your governor's race is looking good over there for you? It's looking good. We have our coordinated campaigns. We have our voter registration. Um, over 400,000 people have regist- new registered voters okay. this year in Texas, we'll which see. now gets us over 17 million registered voters in the state. Um, so we're making headways and we're going to continue pushing forward, not only in this election, but in every election. All right. Well, we'll see if he can win this time. Jeffrey, um, talk about Houston Forward Times and your book. Don't argue with me. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm excited. Uh, I need to get my husband to read that book. Don't argue with me. (laughs) (laughs) Let me tell you, uh, you know, I not only serve as a politician, uh, but I'm a politician with a pen. I'm a journalist. I'm the editor of the historic Forward Times newspaper here in Houston, Texas, celebrating over 62 years, uh, never missing a week of print. I also write, write for Black Press USA and the National Newspaper Publishers Association, which is all of the Black, original Black Press 
uh, in the newspapers across the United States. So I truly concur with uh, Mr. Corte as far as the influence of the black press of America on the issue regarding Brittany Grider and many more things. Uh, Don't Argue With Me is a book that you can get jeffreyelboney.com. Again, that's jeffreyelboney.com. It's a no-nonsense approach to the issues that we are in the Black community are experiencing, including some of the things that we've talked about. And I'm um, looking forward to uh, having people uh, read the book. And um, Hold that I'm, thought. I want to get Kim in here. Kim, Chalk Talk and Kimmy Treats. So Chalk Talk is a weekly show I've been doing about nine years. It's a sports show, and I talk about how sports is more than a game. I have these kind of conversations and other conversations that relate to sports and people involved in sports you may not see someplace else. Every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. And Kimmy Treats is is a company I have where I sell vegan popcorn and I make a hand whipped organic body butter. The vegan popcorn is pretty amazing. It's made with coconut oil. Tammy, I'll have to send you some. Please do. Popcorn is my favorite snack, but I thought popcorn was already vegan. So uh, the it's mind what blown you put right in, now. Right? Right. <laughs> mind Please. blown. Thank you yeah. all for being on the business of being black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul.